good welcome to all of you. Um, thank you for attending today and to listening to the talk. Ariana Resources has been based um, in Turkey over the last eight years. Um, it's a company history that's gone back ten years now, um, but we started off um, in the very early days as a grassroots exploration company focused only on Western Turkey. We've since grown that. Uh, we're focused primarily now on what we call the Red Rabbit Gold Project um, in, South, uh, in Western Turkey. Um, a, uh, a joint venture now with El Dorado Gold up in northeastern Turkey and also we have an investment in a private company called Tigris Resources focused on gold and copper exploration in southeastern Turkey. And I'll talk about um, these various parts of our strategy um, in the coming <coughs> talk. Robert, I just noticed that um, all the fonts seem to have changed from the version of the presentation that I sent. Um, the fonts are very small, but it doesn't matter. Um, we'll put a uh, revised version of this presentation up on the website uh, following the talk, and we'll correct the fonts if there's an error there. Um, key points about the company, um, you won't be able to read this, of course, now, but uh, uh, we've got about 270 million shares in issue. Market cap of about £7 million pounds currently. Uh, warrants and options, modest numbers there. Um, fully diluted, about £300 uh, million. Um, current volumes that we're seeing over a three month trading period, about 600,000 currently, so it's a fairly well traded stock. Um, and here's some details um, concerning our key shareholders. Um, we have uh, Bank of New York nominees, that's Web Capital, uh, holding a large chunk of the company, uh, about 14% there. Uh, European gold fields appears here, but of course this is now El Dorado gold since um, El Dorado acquired um, European gold fields in February of this year. Um, and then a number of other uh, major shareholders, Bruce Rowan, um, Starvest, uh, making up the bulk. Uh, you can see the stock price chart there. Um, and volumes that we're experiencing at the moment. Um, <coughs> we have a very uh, strong board and a very stable board. This has essentially been the board since IPO. Uh, Michael Spriggs is our non-executive chairman. Um, he comes with a, a great background in the mining industry. Um, he's been focused as a geologist in his early career, but uh, later on in mining equities research uh, with SG Warburg. Um, and later into um, mining-focused um, PR. Michael Villiers is fairly well known in London, um, accountant by background. Um, he's worked in a number of operational environments throughout Africa and Eastern Europe. Um, William Payne, another uh, accountant. Um, so we've got a, a strong finance aspect to the board. Um, and William is also um, interested in other mining companies as well. Uh, my background, um, as you can probably tell from the name, uh, is Turkish. Um, I, I was born there. Uh, Turkey is my country um, and I have every reason to seeing Ariana um, develop as a success story in that country and to see ourselves um, all the way through to uh, mining gold in the country. Now, what I wanted to do, um, given that this uh, part of the, um, the conference today is about um, what's going on in southeastern um, Europe, um, I wanted to just focus a little bit on where we sit and where Turkey um, sits within the overall picture. Um, Turkey sits here uh, within what's called the Tethian Metallogenic Belt, uh, which is a large um, metallogenic province um, that formed during the Cretaceous period, sort of 65 million years ago, um, and is still uh, in the process of forming uh, with the Arabian plate. Um, being shoved up into uh, the Asian Eurasian plate there. Um, so it's a met met metallogenic belt that's very similar um, to, to what we see uh, in the earlier presentation. Uh, and in fact, um, Indonesia forms part of that um, broader arc complex. And what we see in Turkey are various um, historic arcs that have accreted um, through here. That we've actually got three individual metallogenic belts in Turkey and a number of very significant gold deposits, um, as you can see, um, scattered around the country. Um, it is now Europe's largest gold producer, uh, produced um, just shy of um, 25 tonnes uh, in the last year. We're expecting um, further production 
uh, during the course of this year with expansion projects at a number of the um, existing gold mines. Um, it contains um, Europe's largest individual gold producer, which is uh, the El Dorado Cushladar gold mine. Um, 700 ton, uh, 710 tonnes of defined gold reserves currently, um, and estimates based on geological modelling that there is potential for 6,500 tonnes of gold in the country. Um, currently, the resources are spread across 11 major gold deposits, um, and totals about 23 million ounces. It's also an important silver producer. Uh, it's probably something that uh, doesn't feature in, in most people's minds, but um, 9 million ounces of silver were produced in Turkey last year, and it contains uh, the world's seventh largest gold, uh, sorry, silver deposit. Um, now, a little bit about the um, detail uh, of southeastern Europe there, a number of uh, major deposits um, running through this, uh, this art complex. Uh, through Slovakia, Hungary, Romania, uh, Bulgaria, into northern Greece, and then finally into Turkey, and then beyond uh, Iran, uh, Pakistan, and so on. Uh, major deposits in Turkey um, include uh, the Kushladar mine, which I've just mentioned. It's now about uh, coming up to 17 million ounces uh, in total resource. Uh, it probably have a 20-year mine life. Um, Chöptat, which entered production last year um, in southeastern Turkey, over here, it's about 6 million ounces. Um, other producers include Mastra, um, Kuchikder, FM Chukula, which was pushed into production last year by El Dorado Gold, um, and a number of others that aren't appearing on this map, um, other development projects um, located elsewhere in the country that are expected to go into production um, in the course of the next couple of years. Um, one of those is our own. Now, apart from the geological prospectivity, which is our reason for being in Turkey, of course, um, Turkey itself is a very attractive mining destination globally. Um, there are a number of reasons for this. Um, it's a very strong uh, economy currently. Um, it's in stark contrast to what we see elsewhere in Europe. Uh, currently, the world's 16th largest economy, and there's a stated desire to become the 10th largest economy by 2023. You may ask why 2023, it's a bit of an odd number, uh, but that's 100 years uh, since the foundation of the Turkish Republic. Uh, so it's a very critical date in the minds of uh, politicians um, and a target that uh, we're all hoping to be a part of achieving. One important part, which is very well recognized, is that mining is critical um, to this growth strategy of the Turkish economy. Uh, and this is borne out um, by changes to the Turkish mining regulations uh, they were originally changed in 2004 and updated again in 2010. Uh, they're just introducing a new Turkish trade law, uh, which improves um, the ability for companies to establish themselves in Turkey um, and the, the regulations concerning how those companies report um, to the public. Um, so that's being introduced just now. Um, they've also, in the process of finalizing new regional incentive schemes, and mining has been defined as strategic high priority. Um, so we're given our own category, um, and it applies across the whole country. But then within individual provinces or districts across Turkey, there are other incentive schemes that kick in. So there are various tax breaks, um, uh, VAT um, uh, rebates, customs duty exemptions, um, and also VAT returns on gold and silver exports. A new environmental regulatory framework was also introduced during the course of 2010-2011. Uh, some aspects of that have actually resulted in us having some delays in our own uh, development program. Uh, but it's okay, we're working through it um, and we're, we're sort of well back on track. But we had a bedding down period uh, with the environmental, the environmental regulations. Um, we've also seen uh, new mineral license auctions kick off. Uh, these are announced periodically. Uh, they cover the whole country. Uh, back in earlier this year, in uh, January, 1,250-odd uh, licenses were announced, and those auctions proceeded all the way through till the end of May. We've now just seen a new batch of licenses, just over 1,500 licenses across the country, um, coming up to auction in late July, and they will run through to December. Another important thing about Turkey is that we have a very skilled labour force. We've got no shortage of geologists um, and other uh, expertise within the mining sector, um, very good mining engineers, in fact. 
um, very well educated graduates and we put a number of those onto training programs of our own. Now our strategy is split uh, between development, discovery and exploration. Running this uh, strategy in parallel, the intention is to bring what we call the Red Rabbit Gold Project in Western Turkey into production as soon as possible. We're currently targeting uh, the latter part of 2013. Uh, right now we're working on our feasibility study and I'll detail um, some of the, the work that we've been doing uh, later in the presentation. Discovery is focused on expansion of the Red Rabbit Gold Project. The current resource is established on only 20% of the known vein system. Uh, there's certainly scope to identify further resource extensions. In fact, we identified four new veins. Uh, and we've been drilling those uh, through a 4,000 metre drilling program um, during the course of the last few months. Uh, that program is ongoing. Uh, we're also going to be drilling at our El Dorado Gold JV in northeastern Turkey this year. Exploration. Exploration is ongoing. It's what the company is all about. Uh, we know that uh, there's a long timeline to discovery um, and you have to keep exploration going no matter what. Uh, we've secured four new licenses um, in Western Turkey through the government auctions that were uh, just completed um, and we're going to focus on new exploration um, of those licenses during the course of the rest of this year. All those licenses all sit within uh, Western Turkey and in vicinity of the Red Rabbit project. We also have our investment in Tigris Resources, uh, which is focused on the Kurdish-dominated regions of southeastern Turkey in a region that hasn't seen very much exploration um, over, over very many years. So this is how we're distributed across the country. Uh, there are a big cluster of activity in western Turkey, split between what we call the Western Anatolian Volcanic and Extensional Province, or WAVE for short, uh, and the Red Rabbit Gold Project that forms its core. Now the idea is that we bring Red Rabbit into production, identify further opportunities for resource growth, and feed those resources into the central location um, at Red Rabbit. Our JV in northeastern Turkey, uh, some of you may remember from previous presentations that I've given that we had a joint venture area that covered all of northeastern Turkey with European gold fields. Uh, since the acquisition of European gold fields, that gave us the opportunity to renegotiate certain aspects of the JV. Uh, we've now trimmed that area right down to focus exclusively on the Artvin province in northeastern Turkey and specifically on the Ardala Porphyry and Sullenbash High Sulfidation Gold System. This is the area defined for Tigris resources. The Tigris is undertaking a lot of new exploration across this region. Um, they've flown an airborne survey, for instance, um, and there's many, many years of uh, follow up there uh, for the guys. <coughs> So this is the um, detail for Red Rabbit Gold Project. Uh, this map just shows the distribution of licenses um, cutting across um, in a northeast trend um, through from Kuzeltepe here to Tavshan in the distance there. Uh, we've tied up some other licenses uh, through this region through the recent government auctions. And we've basically taken up um, all the key mineral properties uh, within what we call the Sundurga Gold Corridor. We're currently working on the uh, final feasibility study. Uh, we've completed the pre-feasibility study earlier this year. Uh, we're looking at a mine life of eight years. We've got in-pit resources of 1.18 million tonnes, um, or 116,000 ounces of gold, uh, 1.4 million ounces of silver. Uh, we're targeting production of about 20,000 ounces uh, per year of gold equivalent um, over that eight year period. But there's certainly gr opportunity to grow that resource base and our intentions are to stay uh, working on that area for at least 10 years. In parallel with the definitive feasibility study, we have the environmental impact assessment underway. Um, like the uh, Indonesian case, uh, there are public consultations and we're working towards um, starting the formal process of um, environmental permitting very shortly. Uh, we have our project summary document prepared uh, and we're due to submit that very soon to the uh, Ministry of Environment and Town Planning. That will kick off a period of several months of uh, formal permitting. We, meanwhile, we have all the baseline studies complete. Um, the only aspect of the existing EIA and indeed the definitive feasibility study that uh, we are delayed on, um, and partly as a result of these changes to the environmental regulations that I spoke about, are inputs to the tailing storage facility. Uh, we basically uh, didn't have access uh, through forestry permits um, for the tailings dam disposal site uh, to do our geotechnical and hydrological drilling. 
Um, but we, we now have uh, the, the go-ahead to proceed uh, with getting those applications uh, completed. Uh, and we're in that process right now, so um, we foresee no further delay there. In the meantime, we've been acquiring freehold land um, over the RSU South uh, main vein. That contains the bulk of the resources, essentially the, where the payback pit will be located. Um, we've completed almost uh, all the land acquisition um, over, that, uh, over that pit area. Now, we've entered a joint venture um, on Red Rabbit with a Turkish construction firm called Prasia. Uh, Prasia is no ordinary construction firm. They have uh, a business specialization in gold processing and silver processing plant uh, design, construction, and commissioning programs. Uh, they've been involved in a number of plant builds in Turkey, including um, building the um, ADR circuit, um, which is the, the main gold circuit, effectively, um, on the Kushladar plant. Uh, and they've been involved in a number of other uh, plant builds elsewhere as well. Um, so they've done all the work um, related to the processing, uh, process plant design. Uh, we're at feasibility stage on all of that. We're just going through a final um, review with Tetra Tech um, on the final designs. Um, essentially, we're ready to go. So we've got a very good partner, and Prasia are earning into uh, the project through expenditure of $8 million. Uh, they spent $1.4 million of their own money so far. Uh, they have about 14% of the joint venture company. Um, we will then expect them to commit a further $6.6 .6 million, um, and at that point, um, once they've committed the full total of $8 million, they would take 50% of the project. Uh, management control would then pass to um, the people of Prasia. Now, we've estimated the capital cost for Vine Startup at uh, about $26 million, um, but it's quite interesting um, to note that one of the incentives that we can um, utilize uh, or use to our advantage um, is that the moment you reach a threshold of 50 million Turkish lira, um, capex, uh, then various new incentive schemes kick, uh, kick in. So we're actually going to inflate this figure effectively. Uh, we're actually looking at 28 million uh, so that we can take advantage um, of those incentive schemes because for the long term, um, they, they make sense. So we're planning to debt finance the remainder. Uh, we're looking for, let's say, uh, for the sake of argument, 20 million uh, through debt. Uh, or the combinations of debt and equity. Uh, another important part of the existing joint venture is that any new resources that we identify in the Red Rabbit Gold Project area, we can feed through to the joint venture at three times expiration cost and still, of course, retain 50% of it by virtue of the joint venture. Um, this photo uh, is just worth emphasizing. This was a, a trial pit that we'd undertaken uh, back in 2009. Uh, we mined 5,000 tonnes of ore um, from the licence, uh, trucked it to the Etigimish plant and produced our first gold. Um, so in a sense we're, we've already been uh, a gold producer and indeed will be uh, an even larger gold producer very soon. Uh, this is a satellite image uh, taken of the site layout as planned in the feasibility study. Um, these are the open pit areas, so this is the Arzu South Vein, Barnu Vein, Derya, Arzu North. This is the waste rock dump site uh, and the tailings down disposal site. So the area of uh, land acquisitions that I was talking about earlier is through here. Uh, so we've essentially bought all the freehold land there. There's additional land that we need to uh, acquire through here, the access road to the tailings dam, and a few plots of land here. Uh, but the, the locals are very much on our side um, and we're having no problem with uh, the relevant negotiations there. Um, as you can see, there are other areas that are forestry. Uh, this is all natural pine forest. Um, so the tailings dam sits within a forestry area mainly, uh, and that's the reason that we, we've had a few hold-ups. So the potential for further discovery is significant at uh, Kuzultepe. Previously, we were focused entirely on the veins that we could see in outcrop. Um, makes sense to do so. You drill things that you can see. Uh, but we always had an expectation that the vein system is likely to proceed under cover. Uh, so it's basically a cover sequence of volcanic rocks that runs through here. Um, and late last year, early this year, uh, we started the process of drilling the extension here uh, and over here. Uh, what we found from that, um, we've discovered a new vein system. So the, the idea that the vein system continued um, has proven to be true. Uh, there's a lot more drilling to come. Um, before we prove up the resource in that area, but it's certainly there. And we've seen some fantastic grades, which I'll go on to talk about. 
We've also discovered extensions based on geophysical work um, to existing vein systems through here, Ganze vein, Hande vein, which is an extension to Banu. Uh, these have been, well, Ganze has been drilled in part uh, recently, um, Hande vein we haven't got around to drilling, but these are all things that will uh, form part of the exploration program moving forward. Now the important drilling that we've undertaken through this what we call the gap zone between Arzu South here and Arzu North there, uh, so this was the drilling undercover, has identified this extension. Um, and the vein system gets quite complex here. Um, there's a lot more going on here than we first gave, uh, gave thought to. Um, we had a very strong geophysical anomaly, uh, which is what we had originally been targeting. Um, but it's quite clear that we also had an extension to the vein system up here. Uh, and we've only been able to drill test it from a, a location um, to, to the north. Uh, so, one of, the, one of the sets of results which is really worth uh, emphasizing, and I'm sorry that you can't read it, um, it's, it's a terrible font this, um, but uh, one of the fantastic intercepts that we had undercover was 12 meters, uh, 13 grams per tonne gold, uh, 187 grams per tonne silver, so 16.5 grams per tonne gold equivalent over about 12 meters, including bonanza grade intercepts over one meter of about uh, 66 grams per tonne gold and 700, 760 grams per tonne silver. These are the best grades we've seen in seven years of exploring the site, um, and that was from a hole located just on the periphery of the vein system there. So we're quite excited. Uh, we think there's a lot more to come out of that area. Now beyond Kuzultepe itself, which is located down here, uh, we have a number of other vein systems um, within the district. We have uh, Kepes, so part of the existing resource six of Kepes, uh, Karakawa, which we haven't got round to drilling yet, uh, Yukara Chamna, which is a new prospect we identified in um, regional exploration um, and was a license we picked up in the recent auctions, and Kuzultepe, a license we picked up last year, again, um, uh, ecothermal low sulfidation vein system. So we've got uh, a number of prospects that have dotted along this Sundurga Gold Corridor uh, with very regular spacing. Um, as I said, we've only focused primarily on exploring the Kuzultepe part of it. Uh, I think there's a lot more to come through that trend. Moving on to northeastern Turkey. Um, as you can see, it's a rather exciting place to work, very mountainous, very alpine. Um, our previous uh, project manager during European Goldfields time was Swiss, um, so he felt very much at home here. Um, I don't think he enjoyed walking up and down this uh, mountain uh, day after day, but uh, uh, that's the way it is. Uh, Ardala, the porphyry centre that we originally focused on down here, um, which is copper, gold, molly, porphyry. Um, we undertook some drilling in the extension here, so we've identified an extension to the porphyry system down here. Uh, but what really got us exciting was a discovery made by um, one of our junior geologists, in fact, right up on the top of the ridge. Um, he came back um, with some fantastic rock chips, which then yielded very, very good grades. We then completed a trenching program over the top of this um, and followed up with drilling. Um, and the drilling has, uh, as I'll go on to, to show in the, the next slide, has been very, very good indeed, and we're very excited about what's coming out of Sarnbush. Now, currently the JV is 49% owned by us, uh, the rest by Eldorado Gold, uh, but we are now the operators of this JV. Previously, the operators were European Goldfields, um, so we've taken control over operational issues moving forward, uh, but funding will continue uh, to be sourced from Eldorado. Uh, about $4.5 million has been spent on the exploration across the region uh, by European Goldfields previously, um, but uh, you, Eldorado is now committed to spending a further $1.8 million this year um, on exploration. Uh, there's some detail about uh, dilution there at the bottom, which I won't go into. Uh, you'll see that uh, on the presentation that we put up on the website. Uh, now, these are some of the results from um, the drilling at Southernbush. Um, so that area that I showed you right up on the top of the hill, uh, we're now essentially on it um, during the drilling program last year. Um, that vein, or it's not really a vein, it's a sort of mineralized zone, breccia zone, trends down the slope towards the porphyry. Now we haven't closed it off in drilling either to the south or to the east, um, but it seems to be a gently dipping zone of gold mineralization wedged between overlying uh, volcanic rocks and underlying decarbonatized limestones. 
There are some similarities in the alteration that we're seeing, uh, particularly the, the decarbonatization of the limestones, but also some of the mineralization that makes this look a little bit like Carlin. Um, it's not, and um, the, the setting's wrong for it, but uh, th there's certainly similarities. And grades uh, and widths that we're seeing are very encouraging. Um, again, apologies for font, but 9.5 meters at 6.5 grams per tonne gold, uh, about 40 grams per tonne silver. 11 meters at 5 grams per tonne gold and 43 grams per tonne silver. 25 meters at 3.3 grams per tonne gold and about 8 grams per tonne silver. Um, and these grades are consistent throughout that structure. Um, and as I said, we haven't closed it off um, in a number of directions. So our drilling program this year is to focus on some of the extensions to that. Uh, we believe there's scope to considerably grow uh, what we can see as being the potential resource base. Um, you know that I'm not mentioning any numbers at this point. Uh, this is a work in progress, uh, but we're very encouraged by what we see. Now, as I mentioned, exploration is a core part of our business um, and a part of the business that uh, we can't ever ignore. Um, we've gone through the process of covering all of Western Turkey with um, extensive regional sampling. Uh, we've basically created uh, one of the newest and uh, most advanced um, geoscientific databases for Western Turkey, uh, which gives us a key strategic advantage when it comes to license auctions, for instance, or negotiations with existing ground holders. Uh, we know where it, all the opportunities are uh, throughout that part of the country. The program was completed um, during the course of last year. Uh, we covered 45,000 square kilometres um, of Turkey. Um, that's basically an area about two and, a half, two and a half times the size of Wales. So it's a, a large area and we did this with a small team. So we're very, very pleased with the, uh, the process there. Uh, we've identified several um, high priority anomalies and we've targeted a number of those during the course of license auctions. Uh, those auctions, as I said, are continuing, um, so we'll continue to, to keep our finger on the pulse there. Now, I've just come back from southeastern Turkey. I was there at the very end of last week. Um, this is a photo that I took at the site. Uh, they're just putting in um, a road, access road, over the top of a porphyry. Um, copper molly system with a gold extension or a gold rim to it. It's a very large um, zone of mineralization and alteration. We've actually tied up most of the licenses along a 20 kilometer trend. Um, and the team at Tigris is um, leading all of this work. Uh, we just have a strategic investment in Tigris that's currently at about 13%. Tigris is still a private company, Jersey based, uh, but it has an exceptional team. Uh, the brains behind it are essentially the brains behind Lydian International, who have been very successful in Armenia. Um, so this is just a hop across the border into the same sort of geological province for them. Uh, so no difficulties. On our side, we're just providing the, uh, the operational expertise and exposure to Turkey um, and the contacts uh, that we've been able to build in Turkey over the last 10 years. Um, so we're very encouraged by um, the start of work here. Um, and drilling is due to commence um, this week. Uh, it's a very exciting time. Um, what we call target number one, uh, a euphemism. Uh, we don't want to give uh, reference to the, the precise area. Um, this is located about 100 kilometers in exactly the same mineral belt as Alisa Gold's uh, six million ounce uh, Chukla deposit. Um, so it's, we're in the right province. <coughs> this is the current schedule for uh, development um, and exploration work that we have planned for the course of this year. Finish the feasibility study. Um, that's essentially done apart from the tailing storage inputs and we're waiting on uh, clearance for the geotechnical and hydrological drilling uh, to complete that. Um, EIA similarly slightly held back there because of those, uh, those missing inputs, uh, but that's a, a process that we're in. Uh, the permitting process is a, essentially a continual process that we've been in for the last year, uh, but the formal process will start, um, my guess is in uh, very early August. Discovery, um, drilling at Sambush in the El Dorado joint venture. Um, resource uh, estimation modeling would probably happen later on in that year, um, so you can expect some news on that front. Um, drilling at uh, the Tigris uh, Porphyry system down in southeastern Turkey, uh, due to commence very soon, as I mentioned. Um, and then on the exploration side of things, um, new project exploration is kickstarting um, this coming month. Um, so that's on the new licenses that we picked up in August. So a summary of where we stand. 
course, the key aspect, the key value driver for the company is Red Rabbit Gold Project, pushing that into production. Yes, it's a modest, uh, modest gold deposit, uh, but this certainly gives us uh, the opportunity, gives us the potential financial clout moving forward to do a lot more work throughout Turkey. Uh, we're in Turkey for the long term. We believe that there's a lot of potential in the country to define new resources. Um, it's still highly underexplored, um, particularly southeastern Turkey, essentially open for exploration at the moment. Um, and large chunks of central Turkey have also been shown very recently to be highly prospective, whereas they've been ignored essentially in the past. Uh, an example of that is Stratex uh, International. Uh, Stratex recently um, announced some drilling results um, and a resource estimate from its uh, property, Öksud, in, uh, in central Turkey. And they're looking at uh, a million ounces plus there. <coughs> Exploration, of course, uh, will continue all the work that we're doing across that portfolio. Um, we've got a number of very exciting things to be focused on uh, moving forward. Um, and Turkey, as a location, as a destination, um, sort of bringing myself full circle here, um, as I mentioned early on in the presentation, is one of the premier destinations for gold exploration um, in southeastern Europe, um, with a dynamic economy, um, intelligent, hard-working populace. Um, there's a lot to come out of Turkey yet, um, and we're very pleased to be a part of that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anika. Uh, are there any questions from the floor? Uh, yes, please. Give us your name and company, please. Paul Reagan, BSA Capital. Uh, thanks again for the presentation. Uh, I was wondering uh, uh, how much of Salem Bosch will you ultimately keep if it goes into production on a percentage basis? Um, it's as actually mentioned in the presentation. Um, we would keep. <coughs> Salem Bosch is a, a bit of an oddity because it sits between an old license that we originally vended into the joint venture um, and a new license that was acquired by the joint venture um, since its incorporation. Um, so it would be a combination, presumably, between 20% and 10%. That's the best answer I can give. But it depends on where the bulk of that resource eventually sits. And at the moment, we haven't determined that. There's another question over here. Yes, please. Yeah. Who's your name? Okay. Uh, Graham Smith of Jeffers Investment Management. Uh, on Red Rabbit, can you tell us, are there any royalties? Um, what is the Turkish tax take? Uh, and do you have any idea what your... Sure. On the royalty side of things, we have a royalty obligation that was originally to Newmont. Uh, these were old Newmont licenses, uh, but Newmont sold its royalty to, um, uh, to Franco Nevada, so it's currently 2.5%. It was a scaled royalty um, on the basis of gold price. Um, once it reached $450 an ounce, it would be 2.5% NSR royalty. Um, with regard to um, Cash costs. Cash costs are currently part of the process of uh, defining uh, the work that we're doing to define the, the final feasibility study. Um, I can't mention costs, but what we're looking at is a reasonable range. Um, I would say 600, 650 is, is the sort of um, range that we're looking at at this point in time. Uh, but I can't be specific on that until we finalise the feasibility study. Um, and sorry, your other question was. The Turkish, oh, the Turkish take on tax, yeah. Uh, corporation tax is 20%, um, so that, that's fixed. Um, and that also, there's a royalty component, um, but the royalty is not an NSR. Um, it's what's called a pit, based on a pit head sale price, um, which doesn't really mean much to anyone. That's very difficult to, to work out. Uh, but basically, the, the concept behind a pit head sale price was for producers of, let's say, chromite. Um, they would mine chromite from a pit, um, put it by the side of the pit, and it would be whatever price that a buyer was willing to pay would be the pit head sale price. So it's a percentage of that. Now, it doesn't work for gold, um, but basically the only way it does work for gold is via precedent. Um, and that precedent is established by existing gold mining operations. Um, so in that sense, we're glad that we're not first, uh, because calculating it otherwise would be very difficult. Any other questions? Okay, in which case, Karen, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.